Hello, I am Dr. Costa and in this podcast, I am going to talk about Addison's disease. Addison's disease is a primary adrenocortical insufficiency and it is a Pace's favorite for station 5. But sometimes it also appears in station 2. Addison's disease is not the only cause for primary adrenocortical insufficiency. There are other causes as well. Other causes of primary hypoadrenalism are tuberculosis, but it is uncommon in the UK, surgical removal of adrenal glands, hemorrhage or infarction in adrenal glands. It happens in meningococcal septicemia and venography, then infiltrative diseases of adrenal glands, infiltration due to malignancy and amyloidosis. Now let's get back to today's discussion which is Edison's disease. It is an autoimmune adrenal condition. In this condition there is destruction of entire adrenal cortex, glucocorticoid, mineral corticoid and sex steroid production are therefore all reduced. Some of the common symptoms of Edison's disease are weight loss, malaise, weakness, fever, anorexia, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, constipation, depression, confusion, myalgia, joint or back pain, impotence or amenorrhea, postural hypotension. Some of the common signs are loss of weight, general wasting, pigmentation, especially in new scars and palmar creases, buccal pigmentation, postural hypotension, loss of body hair and dehydration. Whenever you would enter the examination room to face an Edison's disease case, you should look around the bedside for any clues and you should look at the wrists of the patient to find out any medic alert bracelet. You should ask about tiredness and fatigue, postural hypotension and skin pigmentation. Sometimes Edison's disease can be associated with other autoimmune conditions like diabetes mellitus, autoimmune thyroid disease, pernicious anemia, certain rheumatological conditions such as SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome, etc. A great percentage of Edison's disease cases also have vitiligo. So you should actively look for vitiligo lesions. In your focused clinical history, you should ask about the tiredness. When did your tiredness started? Any variation during the day? Any effect on quality of life? You should ask about postural hypotension. Do you feel any dizziness while you stand up from sitting position? You should take complete history of skin rashes. When did it start? How did the rashes spread? In which location do you have rashes? Does these rashes itches? Does these rashes oozes? Is it painful or not, etc. If patient complains about loss of appetite or weight loss, then you should ask about how much weight did you lose in how many days? Was it intentional or unintentional? Any diarrhea, abdominal pain or vomiting? You should look at the neck of the patient, especially you should look for the goiter over the neck region because it is associated with autoimmune thyroid disease. You should check the eyes of the patient to find out if there is any anemia or not. You should look at the fingers of the patient to find out any finger prick marks for diabetes mellitus. And finally, to exclude the rheumatological causes, you can ask is there any joint pain? Is there any rash in the sun exposed area, any hair loss, any problem with menstruation. If the patient is pregnant, 
you should always ask about three Ps, pill, period and pregnancy. Do you take any oral contraceptive pill? Are you pregnant? Are you having normal periods? Etc. Finally, you should not forget about asking drug history, especially steroid use, because steroid use is associated with secondary hypoadrenalism. Smoking and alcoholism history, social history, family history and occupational history, travel history and menstrual history. You should also ask about the concerns of the patient. If patient has any issues regarding his or her social family or occupational life, then you should address these concerns as well. Please be mindful that sometimes patient may appear cushing wet due to over replacement of corticosteroid hormones. Sometimes patient may have visual field defects, especially in case of Nelson syndrome. So the question arises, what is Nelson syndrome? Nelson syndrome occurs in about 20% of cases after bilateral adrenalectomy for Cushing's disease and is characterized by increased pigmentation because of high levels of ACTH. This is associated with an enlarging pituitary tumor. The SIM syndrome is rare now that the adrenalectomy is an uncommon primary treatment and its incidence may be reduced by pituitary hypo uh, radiotherapy soon after adrenalectomy. After completion of history taking and focused clinical examination, you should present your case to the examiner as the Edison's disease. If the examiner asks you about any differential diagnosis, then you can tell him about the differential diagnosis of primary and or secondary adrenal insufficiency. The differentials for primary adrenal insufficiency I have covered earlier in this podcast. One of the main cause of secondary adrenal insufficiency is exogenous steroid use. It suppresses the pituitary adrenal axis. So if the patient has steroid use history, then you can also keep a differential diagnosis of secondary adrenal insufficiency. Some of the differentials for tiredness may be anemia, hypothyroidism and diabetes mellitus. You may also present these conditions as your differentials. Then the examiner will ask you about the investigations. How would you reach the diagnosis? So the first examination would be a full blood count which would show lymphocytosis, eosinophilia and anemia. Serum electrolytes would show hyponatremia and hyperkalemia in Edison's disease. Random blood sugar would show hypoglycemia. Renin aldosterone ratio may show high renin and low aldosterone. We reach the diagnosis of Edison's disease by doing a short synectin test. It is also known as short ACTH stimulation test. Here we give 250 milligram, sorry, microgram of synectin intramuscularly and Edison's disease is excluded if 30 minute cortisol raises over 550 nanomole per liter. There are other supportive tests of Edison's disease. For example, 9 a.m. cortisol may be low. There may be adrenal autoantibodies. ACTH level may be raised in primary hypoadrenalism and may be low in secondary hypoadrenalism. There may be supporting evidence from imaging tests. For example, chest X-ray may show changes typical of tuberculosis. CT adrenal gland may show adrenal adenoma or hemorrhage inside the adrenal glands. Then the examiners will be very satisfied with your answers. They will ask you about the treatment of Edison's disease. The treatment of Edison's disease is done by glucocorticoid replacement, mineralocorticoid replacement and androgen replacement in some cases. Glucocorticoid replacement. Adrenal replacement therapy consists of oral hydrocortisone cortisol 
15 to 20 mg daily in divided doses, typically 10 mg on waking and 5 mg at around 1500 hours. Mineralocorticoid replacement. Fludrocortisone is administered at the usual dose of 0.05 to 0.15 mg daily and adequacy of replacement may be assessed by measurement of blood pressure, plasma electrolytes and plasma renin. Androgen replacement with dihydroepiandosterone 50 mg per day is occasionally given to women with primary adrenal insufficiency who have symptoms of reduced libido and fatigue. Then the examiners may ask you about Edisonian crisis. It is a medical emergency here patient's blood pressure may be too low so that patient may be in shock. Here you should avidly replace steroid 15 to 25 milligram daily in 2 to 3 doses. Then you should also replace mineralocorticoids and look for the improvement in hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. Ideally, fructocortisone per oral 50 to 200 microgram daily is required. You should also give fluid resuscitation to the patient. Examiners can ask you about polyglandular autoimmune syndrome as well because Edison's disease is associated with autoimmune polyglandular syndrome. And this syndrome has two types. Type 1 is Edison's plus hypoparathyroidism plus chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. Type 2 is Edison's plus type 1 diabetes plus thyroid disease that can be hypothyroid disease or hyperthyroid disease. Now I would summarize the Edison's disease case. If you find a Edison's disease case in your station 5 pieces, then you should obviously ask for skin pigmentation that may be due to Edison's itself hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation due to associated vitiligo you should look for goiter you should ask about tiredness lethargy nausea vomiting menstrual problem any visual field defect joint pain any other rashes etc you should never ever forget about asking any steroid replacement, menstrual history, pregnancy if the patient is female. And these are the things you should never miss. I hope this podcast will be helpful to you. I have given you a lot of information. If you cannot remember all the information, then you are most welcome to listen to this podcast again. Please write your comments in the comment section and if you want podcast on any specific medical condition, please let me know. I would create one podcast for you. Thank you.